Hello there. It is Tuesday morning. I have a fresh cup of tea and I'm coming to you to talk to you about types of support that we all can have access and when you need that, when you are growing your business. So I'm Tash Vanzetti, Discovery Coach and Mentor, and I help emerging entrepreneurs from all over the globe get really clear on their big idea and then master the mind shit that stands in their way. You know those little stories that keep you playing really, really small and of getting on with it and going and do the things you want to do. This question comes been coming up a lot for me lately with different people. Um, I'm in the process of taking enrolments for my Momentum Mentoring Group, which is a group coaching program. And as people are reaching out and asking me about that, the question comes up of, do I need group support? Do I need one-on-one -on -one support? Is this what I need right now? Like there are a lot of questions when people are knowing that they need to get support. Hi, let me know when you're jumping on who's here. There are a lot of questions that come up when people know they need support. They know they can't do this by themselves anymore. Um, but they're not really sure what sort of support they need and what's right for them. So that's why I'm doing this Facebook Live. I think it's a topic that needs discussing. Um, I have spoken about this several times before in different groups and different interviews and things like that, but I thought it was time to jump on and share my insights with you as to what I have learned over the past, I don't know, six or seven years of building my business, of figuring out a lot of things of working through the overwhelm of all the things that we should be focusing on, that we think we should be doing. Um, and I'm gonna relate it to a story because I think when we can relate things to story, it's much easier to sort of identify where you are on your journey. So when you are first starting out in business, there are lots of different things that you need to figure out. Um, one of them is around that discovery phase of, what is it that I want to do? Where is my value? How can I show up in the world in a way that feels good to me and also helps other people? Um, and that can be really hard to figure out in the early days. You kind of have this vague idea of what you want to do. Um, and it's only when you start to step into different things that you start to figure more of that out. So when I, I often relate building my business and finding out who I am and what I want to do, you know, when I grow up. <laughs> um, I often relate that to an experience I had a few years back when I climbed Mount Kinabalu in Borneo. It was a charity climb. I had about six weeks to prepare for it. We discussed it and found out I was going over champagne at Christmas. Um, so I had to make it work. I had no idea what I was doing. It was an idea that excited me. It was really inspiring for me to think about standing on the top of that mountain, watching the sun come up on a brand new day, knowing that I had achieved so much. And that's kind of like the vision that we have with our business. We see this opportunity and it really excites us. And we pick ourselves on the top of our mountain, we've reached our summit and we're looking at the most amazing sunrise and the most amazing day kicking off. And that's what we're working towards when we're building our businesses. We see ourselves on the summit and that's where we're wanting to get to. But it's a big climb. There's a lot of different steps that we have to take and there's a lot of challenges we're going to face as we're climbing up that mountain. So if you are in the early stages of business, you're still in that visionary phase of you kind of get the sense of what you want to do, but you haven't fully stepped into it yet. And that's where you can, um, you can get really lost trying to figure out what the right steps are for you. So when I was getting ready for my climb, like I said, I had six weeks to prepare. Um, it was summer holidays, so I had both kids home, so I didn't have a lot of free time and they were a lot younger then, so I couldn't drag them with me doing big treks and training runs and all that kind of stuff. So I had limited time and limited resources to actually get the training done. So what was I doing? I was on forums, I was, on, I was reading blogs, I was watching videos, I was learning all I possibly could about the climb I was about to embark on, about the adventure that I was setting off for. And I read stories um, of what other people had experienced. I looked up checklists and pack lists of what do I need to take, how do I prepare, and I did what I could based on the information that I could find online. So that was free, surfing around, joining different um, discussion threads, you know, trying to find other people that had done the same thing that I wanted to do. I couldn't really find anyone that had done that particular climb um, in real life. So I was just reading posts and updates and watching videos and reading the outlines that they provide when you're preparing for a trip like this. And that was great. That got me the first layer of motivation. That got me the first layer of information. And it was all self-motivated. So I would get up at six in the morning and go for a run. I would be training into the evening. Um, when my husband would get home from work, I would then go do a training run and run up Mount Majura or the, you know, one of the local hills here sort of three times. I'd do the loop up to the radar and back down and up to the radar and back down with my backpack on. But it was often dark when I was finishing, but that was the only time I could fit it into the day. 
So I was really self-motivated. Um, I thought I was as prepared as I could be. I didn't have the option to do altitude training because we're not high enough up in the country here um, and I couldn't get up into the mountains. And even then, the mountains in Australia, Mount Kosciuszko, our highest peak, was actually lower than the base camp we started on. So even if I did manage to get some climbs in, it probably wouldn't have done, you know, helped him much anyway. So I knew I had some challenges ahead of me and I knew I would need some additional support, but I had no idea what type of support I would need until I actually got there. So that's the thing. When you are building this business, it's great to go out, get the information that you need, like start to self-motivate enough to go and learn the basics, set those foundation pieces in place, learn from others, you know, sort of get yourself into the environment and prepare for the journey that you're going on and know that you're going to need some more support as you step into that role and as you start your climb up the mountain. So we, you know, a few weeks later, I was flying over to Borneo. We, um, I was trekking with a group of guys. Well, there was a heap of people climbing up the mountain on that day, but I was actually a part of a group of fellow climbers. So they had done lots of trekking around the world. Um, they had been on many climbs before, many adventures before. And I thought I was pretty prepared. Like I didn't, I knew I wasn't going to, you know, break any records getting to the top, but I was pretty confident that I was going to make it as much as I can. I'm pretty stubborn when I set my mind to things. So I was pretty, pretty sure that I was going to get there. Now we got to base camp on the mountain. Um, and it's really exciting because you get to actually talk to other people that are on the same journey, that are excited and that are venturing down the same path that you're about to venture down. And that's really supportive and really cool because when I was preparing for the climb, my friends didn't really get why I wanted to do this. They always thought I was, they just thought I was nuts. Um, my kids were a bit little. They just were wondering why I was going to leave them for a week. <laughs> and my husband was like, you know, go do it. Um, I don't think he had an, in, any interest in coming with me as far as doing that kind of climb, which was great. He got to stay here and help with the kids. Um, but it was really exciting to be part of that community that understood why I was excited, that understood that I had the same goal that they did was to reach this summit for sunrise. And when you're building a business, when you're creating an idea, when you get into that community of people that have the same common goal, that have the same challenges, the same excitement, the same fears and uncertainty, it's really reassuring. And that's sort of the next layer of support. That's like, you've done your self-motivation, you've done your online research, now you're actually with a community of people that are they're there, they're ready to go with you. Um, so there's sort of, you know, that's that entry level group support, community, that kind of thing. When you start to climb up the mountain, um, that's when you really get tested. That's when you really start to figure out where you in particular need support. And everyone is different in the preparation they've had, the experience they've had, the, um, the perspective they have, the way they handle the mental challenges and the physical challenges. Um, everyone is wired completely differently and how they will show up for this. Everyone is wired completely differently and everyone will need different types of support. So when we started that climb up the mountain, um, we had a handful of guides, probably six guides for the group of people that I was in. And I thought that was complete overkill. I thought, do we really need that many people, that many guides coming up the mountain with us? Surely, you know, one or two would be fine in this, in this size group. It wasn't a huge group of people. Um, but as we progressed, I realised that everyone had different needs. Our big groups started to thin right down and they started to break right down. Some people just needed additional um, physical support. Some needed emotional support, mental support, um, because it's a tough climb. Like it's not just a little stroll around the park um, with a picnic at the top. It's, it's tough. Um, now, in my hastily or well, my haste and preparation, um, I had made some basic mistakes. Um, I thought I was over-prepared, like super prepared, but I was actually over-prepared because what had happened is I had completely overpacked. So all of that free information that was out there with all the beautiful checklists and travel lists that this is all the things you got, these are all the things you're going to need, be super prepared and take all of these things with you. So I followed that advice and I took everything I thought I needed and I turned up at this base camp and I had this massive 20 kilogram backpack um, and I was completely prepared. I had everything I could possibly need until I looked around and all the veteran climbers had these teeny tiny five kilo backpacks. And I'm like, hmm, they're not very prepared, are they? I'm going to make this. I'm going to be okay because I'm super prepared. What I didn't realise was that they were more prepared than I was because they had done similar climbs before. Maybe not this mountain, 
they had done a similar claim. They knew what they actually did need and what they could leave behind. They knew how to make the most of a small amount of supplies to make the trek easier. So it wasn't so much weight on their legs. It wasn't so hard um, physically and emotionally to get where they needed to go because they weren't carrying so much baggage with them up the mountain. So one of my big lessons in that is you have to pack light for success. You don't have to take all of your skills and expertise and every possible scenario with you on your journey up the mountain. As we, so that was my, my, that was my first mistake is being super confident that I had all the things that I would need to get to the top. Trouble was I had too many of them. Um, my stubbornness kicked in. I wouldn't let anyone else help me carry it. I was determined to soldier on, but it really made the climb tough, carrying that massive weight and backpack when I really didn't need it. Um, did I use everything in my backpack? No. Could I have survived with half of it? Yes. Could I survive with less than half of it? Most probably. <laughs> but again, when we are starting out and we, we don't know what we don't know, so we, we do the very best we can when we're starting on these journeys, but it's only when you start to talk to and experience these things with people that have been on a similar journey before you that you can take some of those lessons on board and take their perspective and their insights with you. So as we start our climb up the mountain, um, our pack, our group started to thin right out and we started to see people drop off. So some people didn't even make it to the rest house that particular night. So at the end of day one, we get to a rest house called La Benrata, and that's where we rest our weary legs. We restock and refuel as far as food. Um, we have a really early night. We get to meet our fellow climbers because we sort of go in stages up the mountain. And if you're jumping on to watch the replay, if you're jumping on live, say hi, let me know who's here. So as we're at the rest house that first night, and we're completely fatigued and we're sharing stories and we're doing all the things, we realise that some people didn't ever make it to the rest house. Some people had already dropped off the climb, they'd already given up for whatever reason. But we had the moral support of everyone around us that had made it that far. So it's like another layer of support. So the first experience of climbing to the rest house has sort of thinned out the group. And the, the stayers, the ones that are determined to make it, they're there, they're at the rest house ready to go. Um, a few people were already suffering from altitude sickness. Again, everything affects people differently. So altitude sickness wasn't an issue for me at the rest house, um, but I'll tell you what it was the next morning and I'll go into that shortly. So you have to really stay with the people that are stayers to continue to hang with the people that are there to support you, that are going to push you forward. The ones that have given up along the way, they all have their reasons, but don't give up because your partners have given up. Don't give up because someone else couldn't make it. Um, I know you're better than that. I know you're more capable than that. So what happened was at the rest house, we got, we went to bed. There were lots of concerns because there had been a lot of rain in the afternoon. And if it was still raining in the morning when we were woken up, we could not do the summit climb. It was too dangerous and they weren't going to let us. And that was our only chance. We had that one morning to make it to the summit and come back because the next lot of climbers were coming through the next day. So you only had a limited time on the mountain to get up and get down. Um, so the pressure was on. So we all went to bed that night hoping and praying that we were going to get our chance to climb the summit the next morning. Um, scared, yes. Terrified, yes. Uncertain, yes. Determined, yes. <laughs> I think you have to be determined. You have to truly believe that you can make it to wherever your summit is, to whatever that vision is you have. You have to have that belief in yourself that you will get there. And if need be, you will ask for help along the way. You cannot do all of these things alone, especially if it's something you're doing for the very first time. There are a lot of climbs I do by myself around town. I love going for a big hike. Um, when we went mountain biking in New Zealand years ago with my husband, my legs were too tired for more mountain biking, but I, I went and did some hikes by myself. And some of the climbs, some of the mountain biking tracks over there were too big. I was not going to do massive jumps and things like that. So I would send hubby on the hard rides and I would just go and do a really good climb up up in Queenstown or, you know, hiking through the mountains over there. So I've done plenty of climbs by myself. I'm not scared of a climb, but this was bigger than anything I'd ever done. So I knew I would need support and I was okay with asking for support. So we got up at 1.30 in the morning. Um, first thing I did was check my legs that I, A, I could feel them and B, they weren't in so much pain that I could actually get out of bed because <laughs> it's a really tough, constant climb up the mountain. We're standing there in the pitch black. It's 1.30 in the morning. We're getting our safety check. We've been filled up with food and fuel ready for this next part of the climb. And as amazing as the views were the day before, we still had a long way to go. We had reached 
a huge amount to celebrate. Like we had a lot to celebrate, the fact that we'd made it that far, but there was still a lot of climbing ahead. And this is when it starts to get tricky. This is when you really start to need that extra layer of support. So the group support is great. You get to a certain point. But then you really need to start to see what are my specific needs right now and where do I need to focus? What is my one goal that I want to achieve and who am I going to get, who am I going to, get to help me to get there? And you have to reach out for that support. So as we're doing our safety check, I'm looking up the mountain and what I thought were the, you know, a line of stars in the sky were actually the headlamps of my fellow climbers. And it was steep. It wasn't just a climb like this. It was steep. It looked like it was going straight up into the sky. And that was what I had to tackle in the pitch black that particular morning. Um, the rain had stopped, but it was super slippery. Um, there were no safety harnesses. There were no safety ropes. Um, I look back at photos now on at Mount Kinabalu. I follow them on Instagram just to remember the trek that I did. And they have a lot of, they have steps there now. They have ropes and they have rails there now. They didn't have any of that when I did it. So I did, I did mine in 2011, 2012. No, maybe it was past that. 2013, I don't remember. 2013 maybe, four years ago. Um, anyway, I digress. <laughs> so as we're going single file up the mountain with no safety ropes, no harnesses, it's pitch black, um, I started to feel side effects of altitude sickness. I started to really lag, like my whole body was getting heavy. I was starting to get really nauseous. I was starting to get really faint um, and I was really struggling to get the air that I needed and the strength that I needed to continue on this climb up this mountain. And it was really frustrating because I'm like, I can see where I want to go. I know what I have to do to get there, but this weight is holding me down. It's like, like I want to push through and I want to keep moving, but my body's not my own. Like something, something is going on that I've never experienced before. And that is what it's like when you start to really push through and grow your business. So you've got that foundation in place. You've made it to the rest house. Things are ticking along. You're getting some clients in. You've, you know, you've created a few products. You're, you're marketing yourself. You're getting yourself out there. And then you can try and take this next layer of growth forward and you try and really push through to the true vision that you have, like really deciding on what it is you want to do, what it is that your specialty is going to be, what your focus is, not what everyone else is doing, not what you think you should be doing. What is your vision at the top of that mountain? What are you climbing towards? And that's when things start to slow down. That's when things get heavy and you feel like, oh, shit, I'm never going to make it. It's too hard. Like mentally I know what I need to do. One step in front of the other, tap. just keep moving, make it to the top. But sometimes things are out of your control. And that's when you start to need one-on-one -on -one support. That is when you need guidance. So remember I said all of those guides that, got on, that started the trek with us and I thought it was overkill? No. By the end of this time, I had one guide for me. Like one-on-one -on -one support was what I needed right then. Now, my guide was amazing. He had done this climb numerous times before. He was there in shorts and a little jacket, and I had two beanies, two lots of gloves, thermals, jumpers, the works, because it was so freaking cold. And I could barely breathe because of the altitude. I just wanted to vomit and pass out because of the altitude. And it was pitch black. So, you know, all these things going for me. But I wasn't trying to do it myself. I knew that if I put on my stubborn hat and I said, no, I can do this myself. I do not need help. I'm going to figure it out. I wouldn't have made it. I would have tried to push through the altitude sickness and I would have just passed out like dozens of people around me and never made it to that summit for sunrise. So I trusted myself enough to say, you know what? I need some one-on-one -on -one guidance. I need someone who has done this before me, who can guide me, who can show me the exact small steps that I need to take um, so I can make it to my summit for sunrise, so I can make it to the vision that I have. And that is where we often get stuck, is we, we get stubborn. We think we should be able to do it. We know, we know what the steps are that we need to do, but sometimes it's not just as easy as knowing the steps. We have to know what's stopping us, what's pulling us down. And altitude sickness was pulling me down on that mountain, but when you're building a business, it's the mind shit. It's all the stories that you've created that are stopping you from taking those small consistent steps up to your summit for sunrise. And that is where you start to need additional one-on-one -on -one support to get you there. If they get you really focused and clear on where you are heading, like which particular peak of the mountain you're climbing to, what is your vision and to help you get there. So my beautiful guide, um, geez, I wish I could remember his name, but I can't. I remember his face. <laughs> um, he literally helped me step by step by step. And it was literally, you take one step forward, 
you breathe, you focus on not vomiting and passing out, <laughs> and you take another step and you sip some water and you repeat the process. Um, because there was so much water coming across the rock faces we were climbing up, we had to detour. We had to make little tiny detours because he'd, he'd done the climb enough times before. He knew which detours to take. He knew which ones were safe. He knew which, which ones to avoid. Um, and I know if I had not reached out and lent on him for support, I would not have made it to my summit for sunrise. And that is the difference between having community support down here, lots of free knowledge where you think you have all the things that you need and you overpack your backpack and you start the climb and you're all confident and then different things start to happen and people drop off. And that's when you start to need more focus support. So the higher you get on your climb, the more support you're going to need. Now, it's not a sign of weakness when you need support. It's a sign of strength to say, you know what, I need, to, I need someone who's been here before me to help guide me through what I need to do to get where I want to go. It's that simple. Like there's always people out there that have done this climb before you, whatever your adventure is, you need to find the people that have done that and you need to lean on them for support and take their wisdom and take their guidance and take their reassurance that you're going to get there. Um, when we reached the top, um, it was amazing. And suddenly the altitude sickness seemed to pass. I, mean, I think I was just too high on adrenaline and too excited that I actually made it. Um, the, you know, we could barely speak properly because the air was so thin. It felt like we had these really fat tongues and we're sort of, you know, talking quite strange. But it was a beautiful thing to see the sun come up. It was a little bit cloudy, so it wasn't the bright, beautiful sun, sunrise that I had envisaged in my head, but it was still breathtaking. And reaching that summit of Mount Kinabalu showed me that I was truly capable of amazing things, things that six weeks ago had not been, been in my reality, things that six weeks before that I would never have pictured myself on top of that mountain, looking out with that sense of accomplishment, thanking the guides around me, cheering on the other people that made it up there with me and knowing that I could do anything I wanted if I got the right support and if I believed enough that I could do it. So I think they're the, the keys there. Um, it was amazing. It was the most beautiful trip. The aftermath of that, I couldn't walk for a week. Um, my legs were so fatigued that I couldn't walk properly. I couldn't take up steps. I couldn't lean down. I couldn't bend down. All of those beautiful things that we have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, couldn't do them. <laughs> or I could with a lot of pain. Um, but it was totally worth it. So I'm sharing this with you that depending on where you are in your journey, there are different types of support that you're going to need. Um, it's okay to reach out for different things at different times. It's okay to say, you know what, I haven't got all this figured out yet. Just because you've come from a, a really successful corporate career or you've built another successful business, if you're navigating new terrain, if you are starting something new, there are things you're going to have to figure out. And it's okay to be a beginner again. It's okay to say you need help along the way. And it's okay to either be part of this community support to get the sort of that that community, let's go, let's go do it. Yep, let's help each other out and, and urge each other on. But sometimes you're going to get to that place where you just need more specific guidance. You just need more focused attention on what it is that you want to reach and the goal that you're creating for yourself. Sometimes you might not actually be able to see that goal. Like the fog is over the whole top of the mountain and you can't see exactly what you're climbing towards. But what you need to do is start to move up that mountain to start and wait, you know, climb above the clouds, get through the fog, work through the fog, and then you can see the peak that you're going for, the summit that you're after. Um, and that's the most amazing thing. So I often, I started this by saying, you know, I'm opening up Momentum Mentoring, which is a group support guidance and accountability, which offers the group community support where everyone's cheering each other on, we're all on the same journey, we're all on the same path, I have built into that one-on-one -on -one VIP support. So if you want the additional coaching, if you want the additional guidance, if you need some additional help, that's built into it. But I also do one-on-one -on -one coaching with people because not everyone wants to be part of a group. Not everyone wants to share what they're going through. And I totally get that too. Um, I had someone reach out to me last week saying that they wanted to work with me after I was telling them what I did and they said, yep, that's amazing. I really want to work with you. I'd love to get your perspective and your guidance and your support. Um, but they wanted to know whether what options there were. And there were different options for one-on-one. -on -one. There was a momentum session, which is just a quick hit of clarity and direction. Let's just get in for one hour and just go through everything you've got going on. 
find a clear direction, give you some action steps to move forward and get you moving again. So sometimes we just hit a road bump and it's just, we just need that little push of momentum to get us over that little hump and off we go. Um, sometimes people need a few sessions, but like say, you know what, that first one was great, but can you just help me with this and the next bit? And just, just that extra momentum is needed. So you can sort of catch up for three sessions, for example. Sometimes people need three months. And on most of my clients, we work on a three month um, basis. And I really help them not only uncover what which mountain they're trying to climb and what their vision is and where their value is and what they need to put in their backpack to climb up and what they can leave behind, but it's the implementation. It's actually taking the physical steps into the things they need to do. And that's where they need the most support. Some people just want clarity about direction. Some people want the clarity about direction, but then they want that additional support as they reach their own summit. Because sometimes going alone is too hard. It's too scary. Um, they can't self-motivate enough to do the things they need to do. Um, so I hope that helps. I hope that gives you some insight into thinking about where you are on your journey, thinking about where you are in your climb to your summit. Um, are you at base camp? Are you in the early phases? Have you made your way up to the rest house? Are you sort of getting some initial success and growth in the business, but you're ready to take on the summit? Now you're ready. You've you've made a big claim, a climb. You've reached some goals, but now you're ready to put through to the top. Um, so I'm here for you. I'm here to support you through that. I'm here to help you not only discover what it is you want to create, but show you how you can actually go do that, how you can overcome all the stories that have kept you playing small, how you can start to be really visible with the ideas that you have, how you can really start to step into the value that you have, because sometimes, I mean, sometimes all of the time, <laughs> When we try and put a value on the work that we do, when we try and put a value on our skills and our expertise and our knowledge, it can be really hard and it can be really scary. Um, I had a client last week or the week before that was really struggling with putting a price on a proposal she was sending out and she told me the number that she had chosen and we doubled it because she was worth so much more than that. She was playing really small, which is what we all do, um, but I was there to support and guide her through that. So we doubled the proposal price, she sent it out and it was accepted. And that is the beauty of understanding your own value and knowing what your value is and being okay with charging that. Um, yeah, so there's a whole other topic I could talk about, visibility and value. But today I just wanted to share this little insight with you so you could understand what you need to consider. Where are you on your journey? How much support do you think you need right now to get you where you want to go? Is it group support? Is it big community support where there's a ton of people, we're all excited, we're all brewing around, we're all doing our thing, we're getting ready at base camp and we're going to go up. Or are you further along the path where you need a more focused approach? Are you further along the path so you need someone there to guide and support you but with your particular um, challenges in mind, with your particular questions in mind? Sometimes in the bigger community groups it's really hard to get specific support for your specific problems or where you need to focus. Um, and that's where you need a more focused approach, which was what Momentum Mentoring is. And then the further you go up the mountain, you might be ready to take that next big layer of growth in the business of really, I think, what's next for me? What else am I here to do? What else am I going to focus on? I've achieved these things here. They're great, but I'm ready for the next step. And that's where you need to really step up and get that one-on-one -on -one support that you need to move forward, to reach that summit regardless of the darkness, regardless of the cold, regardless of the altitude and all the other excuses we might come up with as to why we can't do it, that's when you need to focus and knuckle down and get the support that you need. So I truly hope that has helped. Um, let me know where you are on the mountain. Let me know where you are in your journey. Um, and let me know if I can support you because I want to help you figure this stuff out. I want to help you implement the ideas that you have. It's not just about buying another course. It's not just about downloading some more information. It's about actually implementing the ideas that you have and stopping the stories that are keeping you small and helping you move forward into the into what it is that you want to create, what it is that's right for you. So I'm going to head off. My tea is cold. I didn't even get to drink it, but that's okay. I enjoy sharing these lessons. I enjoy sharing these stories. If you have any questions, leave a comment. If it resonates at all with you, leave a comment. If you want to ask me something and you're too scared to do it publicly, you don't feel comfortable doing it publicly, that's fine too. Ask me a question. Send me a message through Facebook Messenger. Send me an email. That's totally fine too. Natasha at natashavanzetti.com. Um, I love getting both. I love getting messages from people. I love getting emails from people. So 
figure it out. Where are you on your journey? What type of support do you need right now that's going to help propel you forward um, to do the things that you can't always do for yourself, to help you motivate and move forward and create the momentum that you want to create in your business, in your life, in everything that you do. So I hope the day treats you well. I hope if you're jumping on to watch the replay, you made it all the way to the end. That would be amazing. <laughs> Let me know if you did. And I will check in again soon. All right, I'll see you later. Bye.